Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Before we could start, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Can I request Nikki, can you lead us in prayer? Uh, sure. I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, you're audible. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We just pray that as we learn from your word, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to us and teach us. And uh, we pray for Dinah also, Lord. We pray that you bless her and may you speak through her, Lord. And uh, may you reveal through to us through your word, Lord. We pray for a special anointing as we learn today. And we pray that you reveal and help us to understand and learn everything. May this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You're welcome. As others join, I'll just present the presentation. So good morning once again. Welcome back. Um, so last class we studied on the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And we uh, we 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 studied on the eight points under that. We we uh, sh uh, we shared on the quickening of the spirit and the assurance that we have within it, the desires within and the knowing of the Holy Spirit. And later we also, uh, uh, you know, touched upon the promptings within the stirring, the strong, strong stirring of the Holy Spirit within us and the foreknowledge within and, and also along with it, the warnings we studied. With this today, we will go move on to the next chapter. That is the fifth chapter in our notes. Fifth chapter which is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not lead us and guide us alone, but He also speaks to us. He speaks to us in different ways. Now, one is through the inner voice of the Holy Spirit. For some, they have experienced the audible voice of the Holy Spirit. And again, through the voice of the Spirit in prophecy manner. So today we're going to study how the Holy Spirit ministers to each one of us. So in today's session, uh, I would request uh, our class members to share their experience as we study and as the Holy Spirit reminds each of you all how Holy Spirit started speaking to you. Okay, so... Uh, just uh, be remembered and at the end of this session, feel free to unmute your mic and share your experience with the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit led you in different stages in your life or to overcome a situation or how he guided uh, to make a decision or how he guided, he led you to a place. Okay, so with this, we will move on to chapter five. Uh, here we see the God of the Bible is a God who desires to speak to his people. God desires to dwell, you know, among us. And he also speaks to us. He understands us. So only uh, if only if somebody can understand us, they can speak to us. And they speak to us, to our situation. And they respond to us. Uh, uh, 
through the circumstance what we go through so we see the holy spirit uh, speak to us and in the bible we see time and again how the holy spirit spoke to the servant of god the prophets the ministry leaders and even in the new testament how the holy spirit led the disciples and the apostles uh, you know uh, through the inner voice or through the audible voice how they witness the holy spirit uh let's uh, read on few of the scriptures that we have can one of you all please turn to ezekiel chapter 3 verse 24 there are uh, the list of five scriptures can i request five of them to please pick up each scripture and start reading ezekiel chapter 3 verses 24 Then the spirit entered me and set me on my feet and spoke with me and said to me go shut yourself inside your house man the next verse Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 5 Then the spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me speak thus says the Lord thus you have said o house of Israel for i know the things that come into your mind And can we have one of us read on Acts chapter eight verse twenty nine, and the next other two verses also followed. Then the spirit of Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. Next. While Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, "Behold, three men are seeking you." The next Acts chapter thirteen verse two. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, "Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them." Okay. so we see in each of these scriptures the five scripture that we study two from the old testament and three from the new we see how the holy spirit spoke to each one of them in a very specific manner same way today the holy spirit is leading us in the same way he is speaking to each of us in a specific manner in the way that we need to be guided So let's look at us. Okay, are we tuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Can we hear the Holy Spirit in that specific manner where the Lord is guiding us? I understand there are many voices within us, but we need to silence all the other voices, like our voice, the many other voices, and just seek the Spirit of the Lord's voice. Now, some of us may wonder, how do we know it is the Holy Spirit who speaks to us? Because sometimes it is our own self which speaks to us. Or sometimes even the enemy speaks to us. But how do we know it is the Lord who is speaking to us? We have the conviction within us, and always the Holy Spirit speaks to you know, which is aligned to the Word of God. and we'll have that inner peace the inner uh, confidence that this is from the lord the inner witness is the most common way through which all of us uh, you know we are we have been led by the holy spirit as in the previous chapter we studied on the inner witness comes through our conviction knowing or the assurance impression feeling or the sensation of the holy spirit it gives to our spirit and here we study the voice of the spirit he releases his words into our spirit and it, it is much stronger when the spirit of the lord speaks it is much stronger and it is also clear in some cases it is much louder than our own self and he directs us he instructs us so that we can hear and follow correctly the inner witness of the spirit comes through the impression of our spirit the voice of the spirit comes through the words that released in our spirit to 
to help us understand the voice of the Holy Spirit, we can see, uh, uh, you know, it has been broadly classified in four ways. The inner voice, the audible voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Voice of the Spirit in prophecy. And one more is the voice of uh, the collective witness to the Holy Spirit. There are four. In our notes, we see there are four. The inner voice, the audible voice, and the voice of the Spirit in prophecy. And the, coll the collective witness to the Holy Spirit's leading. The inner voice of the Spirit is God speaking to our spirit. We do not hear the sound but we receive the message clearly. It is like the words, the information or the knowledge coming into our spirit without the medium of any, you know, or the audible sound. The inner voice often comes as a, uh, as a line or sometimes as a word or a sentence, giving us the instruction or the direction that we need. Uh, we, we can see a few instances. We see in the life of Ezekiel, like God speaking to Ezekiel. And Ezekiel put it across this way, saying that I heard a voice of one speaking. It is an, sorry, the inner voice. The inner voice often comes as a line or a sentence or an instruction or a direction from the Lord. We see two cases, uh, one in, in the life of Philip. The life of Philip, we see in Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Can one of you all please turn to Acts chapter 8, verse 29 and read? The Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So in the chariot, there was a eunuch who was reading the, uh, uh, the, uh, the scroll of Isaiah. As he was reading, he was not getting an understanding, but he was reading. And as the Lord led Philip, Go and overtake this chariot. He went, he overtook, and he went into the chariot, met this eunuch. And he shared the word with eunuch. He shared the gospel with him. The Lord had prepared the eunuch's heart to receive the gospel. As he gave him the clarity and shared the gospel, the eunuch was ready to take baptism. And he baptized him. You see how the Lord led Philip. The Lord who knows is preparing the heart of people and at the right time he sends his children to share the gospel, to share the word because the ground is ready to receive the word. And later, you know, in a uh, later part after, uh, after many centuries, we see in the second and third century in North Africa, You know, the church became the center of Christianity. More than one million, uh, you know, uh, believers used to gather in the church. So we don't know whether it was through you now, but then I'm saying the gospel can be reached that way. We also see uh, another instance in the book of Acts. Can we turn to Acts chapter 10, verse 19? Acts chapter 10, verse 19. Can one of us please read? Acts chapter 10, verse 19. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. Yes. So till now, as all the disciples were sharing the word only to the Jews. They were sharing the gospel and the breaking of bread was happening only with the Jews, especially Peter being the leader. 
he was only moving among the Jews. But then here, yeah, the uh, the spirit of the Lord showed him a vision with, you know, we know the story, right? A sheep came with different type of animals and, you know, the spirit of the Lord asked him to eat and he refused it. And later, the Holy Spirit led him. He said, there are three men waiting down. Go with them. A clear instruction. No questioning. Peter went with the three people. You know, he went to the Cornelius house and we know the story how he shared the gospel. They, again, the Cornelius heart and his family were prepared to receive the gospel because the Lord had prepared, the Lord had directed them to go call Peter and share what he wants to share. When Peter shared the gospel, when they received it, Peter witnessed the Holy Spirit come upon Cornelius and his household. And this was an eye-opening for Peter that even the Gentiles can receive the good news, can receive the gospel. And this opened the door to share the gospel with the Gentiles. You see how the Lord is leading? In the same way to you and me, even this day, the Lord is speaking with His inner voice with us. That small, still voice is continuously speaking to each of us, leading us and directing us in our ways. Is staring within us is very strong. Last class I shared with you all how the Lord led clearly the directions. In the same instance, He speaks to us. He speaks to us and this will lead to an action. It leads to what we need to do. What is uh, what is God expecting us to do in that season, in that time, in that situation? So when we hear the uh, the voice of the Lord, you see the outcome of it will be a blessing. We also see an instance how uh, the Lord led Pastor Ashish to start a church in Bangalore. You know, uh, he was in uh, Chicago in U.S. in December 2000. As they were preparing, you know, Lord asked them to move to Bangalore and they came down to Bangalore in December 2000 with his family, pastor, his wife and with two children. They came, moved over to Bangalore. The very reason they came here was to start a church at Bangalore. And, you know, uh, Pastor had a, a, like, you know, many ideas, like to have a big revival meeting. And in that meeting, whoever has been saved through them, we can start a church. But then things didn't work out that way, the way he planned. But then the Spirit of the Lord, when he was bringing the Spirit of the Lord, you know, clearly instructed him saying, start with what you have. Very important. Start with what you have. And with that guidance, he took the approval of his parents and he started the church in his house with eight people in his living room. And today the church has grown bigger. The church saw different stages in the ministry and the church has grown. It's all over our nation and also expanding it through the online globally. God can do many things. It started very small. It started very small. And today, it's a blessing to the nation and to the nations as per the vision that Pastor carried within him. Same way, as we are seated in our different places, the Holy Spirit is speaking to each one of us. He has given a bigger dream, bigger vision that each of us may be carrying within our heart. Maybe we are wondering, how can we start? There are a lot of obstacles, maybe like one may be the finance or we need the support of people. We need the help of others or the guidance. But the Holy Spirit is saying, I am the Lord, nothing impossible. What is impossible with me? And today the Spirit of the Lord may be quickening in our spirit saying, start with what you have. This is how the Lord leads. Start with what you have.
second point we see is the audible voice of the Holy Spirit. The audible voice of the Holy Spirit. Can we turn to Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 28? And also Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. Aradhana Kamble, can you also read on Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 and Rosalind, if you have your mic is giving a problem. Verse 28, ma'am. Yeah. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Amen. So when I yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. Amen. Next verse. Aradhana, can you read? Sid, can you read? Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 2. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. Amen. In both the verses, we clearly say the, they heard, they heard an audible voice. They heard the Spirit speak to them. It doesn't say, I sensed. Sensed is when the inner voice speaks. But here it is an audible voice, audible voice of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit is not uh, uh, is not like something, uh, 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 you know, as what we experience, the symbols of the Holy Spirit. It's not like a bird or oil or a fire. But Holy Spirit is a person, just like Jesus. Holy Spirit is a person who can talk to us. He speaks to us. He is with us. He is within us. And He speaks to us clearly. Just like how, uh, you know, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, we hear the young Samuel, uh, you know, um, hearing the voice, somebody calling him, and he thinks it is Eli who's calling him, and he goes to Eli the three times and says, um, could you call me? But Eli said, no. And he directed him, saying, Lord, you are your servant. Speak to me. So Eli knew. Eli understood who was calling him. So it was an audible voice. God can speak to us even in this way. Although it is not a very common way for most, but God speaks through that you know, audible voice. And he can do as he pleases. He can speak in the audible voice to any of us as he chooses. We should not put God in a box and say, only this way God can speak. If, uh, if it is in the other way he is ministering to us, it is not from God. No, we need to keep ourselves open. We need to keep ourselves open. Why are we sharing this? As we share on this, our mind, our heart has been open to receive this kind of experience from the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit can, uh, can talk to us with the inner voice and now even through the audible voice. Okay, rather nice message. Sorry. Okay. With this, we will move on to the third point. The voice of the Spirit in prophecy. 
this is also an important way the Holy Spirit speaks and 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 needs to address it in a greater detail. He speaks to us through prophecy, and we will uh, we will cover this in the coming chapters. Okay, we will move on to the next point: the collective witness to the Holy Spirit's leading. The collective witness to the Holy Spirit's leading. We see Holy Spirit speaking to group of people in a congregation. We go to a church service or a prayer meeting. We see how the Holy Spirit, you know, one person who speaks and he speaks to the group of people. And everyone are able to witness it in their spirit, are able to receive. Maybe it can be a voice of, uh, it can be a word of a, a prophecy or can be a inner witness, something. Uh, it, it, it is affecting the multitude of people, uh, the congregation in the people. The Holy Spirit is mi ministering to each one of them. Uh, one instance we remember is on the day of Pentecost in the New Testament church when Peter spoke. Each one of them could witness, could understand in their own language. Or we would have gone for a, a, a church worship, in a worship service, the pastor is teaching the word and each of us have been ministered. And each of us can witness the power of the Holy Spirit move and convict ourselves to receive the Lord as our personal Savior. Or it can be an instance where the, uh, where the preacher is uh, uh, preaching on a mission mandate. And here the Lord is speaking to each one of them in the church saying that I'm calling you to the ministry. I want you to step out in faith. You see uh, a group of people receiving that call and stepping into that relic. One such instance I remember is in one of our church camp. Church camp uh, of our church has always been planned, pre-planned. Okay, We have a speaker, we have an agenda, what time, what happens. It's all clearly pre-planned. If it's for three days, all the three days from the start till the end, we know at this time what happens. There's a sharing, there's worship, sharing. We have, uh, you know, a time of activity and then, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions. Different uh, things have been planned already till time for all three days. So one of the session, I think it was on the last day, I'm not very sure, second day or the last day, one of the day. Um, it was in the morning. We started the session with the worship. So after worship, there were uh, there were two sessions. One, uh, the guest speaker had to come and give, share the word. And then we have Pastor Ashish share the word. But what happened? Though it was all planned, the worship started, the worship went on. And the worship went on for an extended time. The presence of the Lord was so tangible in that room, in that hall, that the worship could not be stopped. Everyone were on their knees, crying out to the Lord. The Holy Spirit was ministering to this whole group that was present in the hall. The worship was extended. It went on, it went on, which was supposed to be for one hour. It went on, I'm not very sure exactly whether it was for two hours or two and a half hours, but it went on extended. And after the host, uh, uh, you know, worship session, pastor came and, you know, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, each one. And they started sharing how the Holy Spirit ministered to each one of them in the hall. It was just the worship, but Holy Spirit was ministering to each one in the way they could understand. For some, it was through healing. For some, it was an inner healing. For some, they just broke. They could hear the Spirit of the Lord speak to them, ministering to them. It was the Holy Spirit. So they were a collective witness of, you know, Holy Spirit leading each one of them. We see, uh, you know, in Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Can one of us please take up Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 3?
Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, and Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Selene, and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarchs and Saul, as the minister to the Lord, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have, I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, and, they, and laid their hand on them, they sent them away. Praise the Lord. Send them away. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what happened? When the leaders were there, you know, they, or they came together and they prayed. When they prayed, they fasted and they prayed. And the Holy Spirit spoke to them. Set aside Paul and Barnabas for the ministry. Clearly, clearly the Spirit of the Lord was directing. And at the same time, Barnabas and, you know, Saul's heart, which was later known as Paul, their heart was prepared. They took the instruction and they started the journey. So this led them to go to the first missionary journey that was launched. They went towards Galatia and to the other places. And the church was birthed in each and every place where they went on. How the Holy Spirit was moving. We need to be, uh, you know, sensitive to that voice. And also in Acts chapter 15, verse 28. Acts chapter 15, verse 28. Acts 15, 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. For it seemed good, thank you, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay hands upon you and no greater burden than these necessary things. So in Acts chapter 15, we see that the first council that took place in Jerusalem under the leadership of James. James who was the brother of Jesus. So all the elders have come for this meeting and we have even Paul and Barnabas who have come here to discuss among the believers. So in this council they discuss about, you know, how uh, the Lord, uh, you know, sharing the, how even the Gentiles are able to receive the gospel and how the uh, Holy Spirit is coming upon them. So all the apostles and the other leaders, you know, they gather, they discuss it out. They discuss here, seeing how the Lord has opened the door among the Gentiles. Now the Jewish have their own custom and their tradition that needs to be followed. Should even the Gentiles follow was a question. And in the meeting, I'm sure they would have prayed. And as they were discussing, they came across, uh, you know, uh, they came, uh, you know, came to a conclusion saying that let the Gentiles remain as they are. We don't have to follow the same custom or the tradition uh, that which the Jewish people used to follow. Or, uh, for example, the circumcision. And, you know, everyone were at peace. Everyone were uh, convinced with this decision. So, you know, the Holy Spirit were giving them the inner sense of peace, convicting them through the consciousness of all the leaders who were there. So everyone were at peace and they agreed on this one decision and they took it further than, uh, you know, in the other places as they ministered. 
So there was a conviction of the Holy Spirit among all the people who were present in that discussion. We also see, uh, you know, a collective witness among Paul's mission team. Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10. Can we turn to Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10? Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10. Next, Paul and Silas traveled to the area of Phrygia in Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Then coming to the borders of Mysia, they headed north to the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went on through Mysia to the seaport of Tyros. That night, Paul had a visitor, a man from Macedonia in northern Greece, was standing there, pleading with him, come over to Macedonia and help us. So we decided to leave for Macedonia at once, having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news there. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So here we see how the Holy Spirit was directing Apostle Paul and his team. Exactly, we don't know how um, Apostle Paul sensed the Holy Spirit was stopping him from moving into that direction. But we clearly know that was the leading from the Holy Spirit. Yes, Paul was all energized to share the gospel to everyone in every place. But Holy Spirit wanted Paul to go in certain direction where the people are already prepared to receive the gospel. And so even though they had planned to go to, you know, or to preach the gospel in Asia or in other places, Messiah or in Bethania, but the Holy Spirit did not permit them to go to those places. But instead, Holy Spirit showed up Paul in a vision to go to Macedonia. And when they went to Macedonia, because, you know, uh, Macedonian were prepared there to receive the gospel. You know, the church in the Rome started. Macedonia is a Roman colony. And you know, Paul went on, uh, went on there, and how uh, the people were prepared to receive the gospel, and he ministered them, and the Holy Spirit worked supernatural things naturally there. So when we heed to the voice of the Holy Spirit and we step into it, when we take action, you see the move of God happening there. And lastly, very important is for us to test all things, all that we hear, all that has been prophesied, the audible voice or the inner witness or the inner voice or the voice through the prophecy. Whatever we hear, we need to test it with the word. Is it aligned by the word of God? And is it from God? We need to, you know, uh, with all reverend, we need to handle it carefully, pray, discern. We will be studying in the upcoming chapters how we can discern. Because the Spirit of the Lord speaks and we must listen to Him. But at the same time, we must be aware that even the enemy can speak to us. Even the enemy can imitate just like the Spirit of the Lord and lead people astray. It can give from the same gospel what we read, from the same scripture that we read, it can give us a different revelation. And it has done, it has led many people astray from the Lord. Always we need to make sure that it is the Holy Spirit. And remember, Holy Spirit always leads us close to Jesus. It will always be aligned to the Word of God and, and it glorifies Jesus and Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. With this, I'll keep it open to the class to share their experience as how the Lord led them. Okay, class, y'all can unmute your mic. Okay, and next 10 minutes, you can share your experience in certain instance, how the Holy Spirit led you. When can I share? Yes, please. Uh, uh, yesterday, like uh, uh, at our church, we were having 
praying and intercession session, and uh, it was very clear how the Holy Spirit led uh, some of uh, our church leaders and I, you know, like there was a certain um, lady, she came to the prayer time to receive prayers, and she put up her prayer request, and like, you know, we were praying in tongues, and just asking God how to pray uh, 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 to uh, uh, to her, you know, and you know, I just fell in my heart. Like suddenly, um, there was kind of the spirit of heaviness came upon me, and I felt so heavy, so tired, and so dizzy. And I'm trying to pray for her, but something was blocking me, and I was feeling that so strong. And at a, at that time, my pastor came. Hey, Jelly, do you feel that? Uh, the same thing which I'm feeling like I'm feeling so heavy and something is not right, you know. So, yeah, we share it, we discuss it, and we just, you know, we started to worship God, you know. We just invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. And as we were worshiping, you know, I just felt in my heart that, you know, we need to cast out the spirit of uh, witchcraft and, you know, spell. And we started to take um, authority in the name of Jesus and as we uh, started to pray for her, you know, like, I just felt so strong in my heart, you know, like the spirit of heaven has just left. And I was just as fresh as I can be, you know, I feel so uh, awake, you know, like that dizziness left, that heaviness left as I come on the spirit of uh, witchcraft and all those spells, all those uh, you know, heaviness to leave her body and just prayed for her. We ministered to her. And after the prayer, you know, she also shared her experience, how she felt like uh, during the prayer session. And she also felt light and she shared that she was blessed to be a part of the prayer meeting. So I just want to share this. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Zeli. Thank you. That's wonderful. Yes, Spirit of the Lord can also deliver. It's not like also He delivers us from every oppression. Amen. Next. Elisha, Lubega, anyone, just go ahead and share the experience of the Spirit. Brother uh, Subhashish, Okay, um, can, yes. can I share? Yes, an please. Experience? Okay, uh, I want to share the experience of my my dad and father, how the Holy Spirit ministered to him and called him into into ministry. Okay. Early in the late in the nineteen in the eighties. In the 80s, my father was receiving a call into ministry, lay lay ministry, and he was resisting because he had engaged himself in some farming activities in the village. So one time he went to the farm and as he was working on the farm, he said that clear audible voice of the Holy Spirit speak to him that if you don't take care of my flock, I will not take care of your farm. And this line repeated to him three times. And from uh, that experience, he surrounded and uh, accepted the call into laity. And ever since then, the work that the Holy Spirit has been using him to do clearly testify that that audible voice he heard on that faithful day was the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then I also I would also want to share one personal experience. I was I wanted to engage this young lady that I was I was about to marry. While the process was ongoing, uh, each time that 
you want to make, you want to progress to the next stage of the preparation, there was this issue that will crop up there and then each time. So I saw that as the Holy Spirit resisting us and uh, clearly telling us to abandon that cause. Um, I paid heed to that resistance from the Holy Spirit. And I would say that um, it is not a regrettable decision. But I, 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 I now feel easiness in my heart. That weight that was, that burden that was on my heart with that relationship, when the process ceased, there was this easiness and comfort and peace in my heart. So clearly, that resistance that I was receiving to was from the Holy Spirit. And that is my testimony also. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Elisha. One more person before we could end the session. How the Holy Spirit led you, directed you with His voice, inner voice, or in, inner witness. Anyone in the class? Divya, Jafina, Roslyn? Um, I want to ask a question. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, clearly, we see in the days of in the early days of the church that there, there was this um, congregational acceptance and valid, validation of the leading of the Holy Spirit. In our time, there, there are uh, some kind of uh, not wholly acceptance. People uh, tend to look down on the leading of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit as He ministers to, to us, especially in the congregational, in the congregational form. Um, my denomination, for example, when we started in the 60s, then in the 60s, our leadership were appointed by by way of prophecy. When we meet, a prophecy will come, and as the prophecy comes, we accept that prophecy as the leading of the Holy Spirit to select one particular person as our leader. Now. Because of uh, some instances and some false prophecies that some ministers um, have shared, the church leadership have decided that even when there is a prophecy, there will be a casting of votes to validate the prophecy. Yes. I know that in the in the early in the early days of the church, it was done. Where lots were cast and 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 and, and others, but uh, we have also employed the the casting of vote to validate a prophecy. I want to hear your thoughts and perspective on this kind of practice. Yes, it is good. As even in this chapter, when we covered the very last point that we discussed, is every prophecy, every even our own audible voice for ourselves, needs to be tested. Needs to be see is that aligned to God's plan, God's word, and what is the purpose? What is the outcome? Is it ourself, or um, what is the motto of releasing that? Is it ourself, or is it for the glory of God? Is it uh, is it in line? If it's for the church, is it in line with the church vision, mission? Is it in line with the way people have been directed? There are so many ways that to look at, you know, when a prophecy has been released over a self, over a congregation. You know, we need to see, is that aligned to us? 
okay and test it with the word of god okay and go with what the lord says yeah Okay. Uh, so once uh, one instance I know, okay, one instance I would like to share is, you know, uh, uh, the time I encountered the Lord, I had this inner witness within me, like, you know, God has called me to serve him. I was not sure about full time, part time, all that, but that within me, I was clearly, uh, you know, directed saying I was called to serve the Lord, though I was working. Uh, you know, I was in search, like, what is my next step? I need to equip myself. So I need to join a Bible college. Uh, where do I go? Which college do I join? In Bangalore, we have a lot of Bible colleges. So which is the right one for me? Uh, you know, for every small decision, I started praying and seeking God to lead me, seeking the Holy Spirit to lead me. As I was praying, one Sunday, a friend of mine said, come, I'll take you to certain, uh, you know, I've taken an appointment with a pastor. I would like you to meet one of the pastor and discuss. So I went with him. This place is quite far from where I stay, okay? It was very far, and he's a very good man of God. Uh, so he had a Bible study in his church on every Wednesday. It was once a week. So he said, uh, you discuss with pastor so that you can be part of this Bible study every Wednesday. So when I went and I met him, he clearly said no. He said no. Uh, uh, you know, okay, God has called you, but there is a time that, you know, for you to step up. There is a time uh, you continue to work and you uh, you continue to work. You know, the, throughout the way, when I heard that news, throughout the way, I was so, you know, uh, so heavy. I said, no, Lord, you have called me for a full time. But, you know, one thing that I need to understand today, when I look back, I know for everything, there is a season, In the right season. And God calls you, you can quit your job and come into the ministry. OK, so even though the pastor said, no, it is not the right time or, you know, um, go back and continue with your work yes i went back continue with my work but always there was a stir within me always there was a stir within me that i need to equip i need to get into the ministry so god knows the right time when the right time came i clearly sense that i need to put down my papers and i started praying god god relieve me from all these areas and direct me to the right place and as as the lord directed i moved on and I see the hand of the Lord that directed me and guided me. So every prophecy, every word, we need to test. We need to see, is that aligned to our call? Is that aligned to the word? Is that leading us close to Jesus? Did that answer your question, Elisha? Okay. Elisha, you're there? I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yes, yes. That clearly answered the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a, a short break and we'll be back by 10 for the next session. Okay. Thank you. God bless.